SPY went from 390 all the way to 400 plus in less than a day after I called it out yesterday on my Twitter. Uh, no BS or anything, called it out. When we hit this low of day, I got it at 390.3, literally during this 15 minute candle with the arrow low of day. And I even predicted this three days ago in our video, the weekly, or the weekly recap on Sunday. I said we were beginning a pullback all the way back here uh, and we could fall potentially down to this signature print level on uh, SPY, which came from the Cheddar Flow software uh, in the dark pool level feature here. Um, so a pullback definitely is possible. And um, that's kind of what we're seeing the start of as of now. And it could continue down, uh, potentially retest this key dark pool level. This is a signature print level um, at 389.95. That is a very interesting level that I may potentially load for a long. And from there, we rallied straight off of it uh, after I loaded, even with the fact that we had Microsoft and Google earnings, some of the biggest holdings in SPY and NASDAQ. Uh, we had both of those earnings. I still Still held it throughout the after hours, which it did have a major gap up, and we even had FOMC today. And I still held a three fourths of my position through FOMC, which we rallied straight off of and closed it and gave you guys my closing call. Uh, I challenge you to find another YouTube video or YouTube channel on like YouTube in general that has been able to call out the to the level of precision of all of these market moves. Uh, that we've had all the way since I, I've been recording these since March at this point, uh, kind of this style of it. And just especially from the past month to month and a half, uh, since like around middle of June, all the way till end of July now, uh, be able to call all of the dips and tops that we've had so far, incorporating it with my strategies that I have, giving you guys a glimpse on what I personally think is the road that we're kind of going towards uh, each time. So just consistent chop. Like if you were to take a long position or short position in the middle of this, Theta decay would have destroyed you. you your premium would have been destroyed uh, unless you had super far out calls or puts, which not a lot of people do. Um, so this entire thing, uh, this entire chop uh, throughout here was meant uh, to kind of destroy people's premium that they had, whether it be calls or puts that they had. Uh, so we were able to trade it up and down, up and down and up all the way so far right now. So really happy uh, with how this worked out. Seemed like a lot of people were happy in Discord as well. Uh, so this definitely was another successful trade. Really happy about that. And a lot of people have asked me, Ben, what is next? Are you shorting right now because you decided to sell? And personally for me, I am in no rush for the next trade at all. Uh, I'll give you guys here in this video a glimpse on what I think may happen. However, uh, I personally am all out of my trades. I gave the sell signal on my Twitter. Again, I posted on Twitter. I'm not a liner, an alert service, by the way. I posted on Twitter to prove again that it is very possible to trade this market and this chop. I've done it consistently uh, and post my entries on Twitter and exits so far, as well as giving you my thesis uh, every single week on YouTube. Uh, and basically, all of this was just to show transparency. It's very, very possible to trade in this market uh, with even though all the conditions may seem more difficult uh, with all this volatility right now. Uh, so a lot of people have taken that to heart and they've decided to change kind of their mindset going forward. And one of the things I did decide to do today uh, was start up kind of like a daily um, mindset goal uh, on, on Twitter, on my Twitter account. So you can follow me there. It's I posted the one in front of you here uh, that I posted today. But basically, you need to change your mindset if you want to be a successful trader. And before I get into what I expect to potentially happen after we have GDP report tomorrow, jobless claims and everything, you need to understand that your mindset in trading is one of the most important aspects of it. You need to think different than the crowd. There's the stat that everybody knows that says 90% of retail traders fail in the market or they lose money in the market majority uh, the overwhelming majority of them are going to lose in the market. And there's a reason that is. It's because a lot of people think similarly. Uh, and a lot of the uh, market makers out there, a lot of the algorithms that are market makers uh, out there are designed to trade differently and they understand you. So whether you like that or not, that's just how the game is played. And because that's the, how the game is played, you have to learn how to play it a bit differently and have it an edge. Uh, with Cheddar Flow, we provide an edge uh, for you guys to see what big money is doing because big money's smart. They're not going to win every single time. We actually saw spy puts get wrecked today. And I will gladly admit that um, the spy puts that we had in here uh, that showed up with big money or and especially the day before they got wrecked. Uh, majority of the time they are right, but they got wrecked this time. Uh, I personally didn't put that much thought into them uh, when we had this rally here and was able to look through those uh, this time. But for the most part, they've been right in the past. Uh, but anyways, every single day before the market opens, I'm going to share kind of my mindset, uh, some tidbits on how I think and maybe you guys that can be an opening, an eye opening kind of experience you guys can read each morning uh, to kind of get you set for when the market opens and learn from uh, my experiences. But other than that, though, 
Um, you can follow me there if you're interested. Really happy with how all of this played out. And again, like I said, we have GDP reports tomorrow, uh, the report tomorrow. It is expected to be negative at this point. The White House changed uh, their definition of a recession, or at least they told us uh, a reminder that there's many aspects other than two negative GDP uh, quarters in a row that indicate a recession. So that kind of makes us believe that this is going to be a bad report again. Um, but again, with that, a lot of this could also be priced in. We kind of are aware that there's this possibility that it could be negative tomorrow, and we have been for the entire week, so there could be some aspect of pricing it in. And just because the news is negative doesn't mean the stock market has to fall. It may fall even the first day or the second day, but it could still rally straight off of that. And that's what I want to uh, bring up to you on this next thing here. We have two major days left. We have tomorrow and then on Thursday, and then we have Friday. Thursday is going to be really big. We have GDP, jobless claims, and then after hours, we have Apple's earnings. I am not going to hold anything overnight on Thursday, and I'm not holding anything overnight right now. Remember, I completely liquidated my positions uh, for a lot of profits, really happy with how this worked out, uh, and I'm not going to be greedy at all. Could continue up for sure, and my price target, by the way, I've already shared um, for potential by the end of August at the latest is 4,160. I've shared that multiple times. However, it, the question is how will we get there? And as of now, I'm not willing to risk with all of these extraneous variables. I'm not willing to risk holding overnight. I'd rather wait till Friday or even Monday uh, to potentially add something that I can hold overnight. And for the most part, it's going to be a lot smaller of a sizing unless we get a pullback all the way to around 385 uh, to 390 again. That would be my final like loading spot before holding all the way up to 4,160 as my target if we were to hit again. But as of now, we are very, very high up. Uh, I'm not fully expecting something like that to happen. If it does, then great. But this isn't me giving you guys kind of like my map like I've given you previously with my expectations for pullbacks and everything. I'm just giving you a scenario where, hey, if it happens, then awesome, I'd load, uh, especially this week or by Monday of next week. But otherwise, I'm not expecting it to get there. So it doesn't mean short to get there uh, by any means like that. I'm just kind of giving you guys my thought process right now, but for the most part, I'm staying on the sideline for right now, and that may not be what you guys want to hear. You guys want to hear constant trades from me, constant ideas from me, because you want to be proactive in your trading. Uh, but for the most part, though, you have, there's a patient aspect or patience aspect to it as well. Uh, when there's so many things going on in the market and so much volatility after you've been really successful for uh, super long right here, it's a good idea to chill, at least size down, uh, maybe even not trade for a few days. And that's probably what I'm going to end up doing here. Uh, so basically, I'm just giving you my update on that. Uh, if we do look at some other things here, if I look at the DXY, this thing got hammered today. So we actually went back up into the channel, uh, which is typically bearish for the market. Uh, because remember, there's a, a bit of an inverse correlation between SPX and the DXY. Uh, we got back up into this channel here, uh, but then fell straight down because of that big rally end of day. And now we're below it again, which is bearish for DXY. And we'll probably see some form of continuation unless it gaps up big tomorrow. Uh, probably see some form of continuation down, which would be bullish for SPX. Uh, kind of part of the reason why I have the thesis that I do of it hitting a certain level. Uh, another thing here, the VIX is getting very close to a key support level, but isn't there yet. I have a convergence at 22 or a little bit under 22 right now, uh, 2180 so far on my trend line right here. And then a key level uh, of 22. This one has acted as a very strong demand zone in the past. Uh, so you do have to watch around this area for potential pullback and spy. Um, it could tear straight through, honestly. The, the market's going to get really strong soon. But I expect some form of um, a support here for VIX. And I may start adding my long calls on it for the fall. Probably start adding stuff like into November uh, call-wise. If we do hit this at some point in August, that'd be ideal. Uh, start prepping for what I potentially think might happen in the fall, which I'll go into in future videos. And I've done, I've kind of alluded to it in some of my uh, videos in the past, especially the long-term one. Uh, if you look through our videos on Cheddarflow, I've done my long-term analysis and I've hinted at what I think may happen in the fall. Uh, pretty bearish for the fall. Uh, but as of now, I would not short blindly into this market. You can have some chop up and down uh, on stuff. But for the most part though, uh, we are above this key orange line on SPY for now. So you can see here, this is the one that goes to 2009 lows. I've talked about it a ton in the videos. Uh, right now, it looks very bullish as long as we stay above. Uh, so pullbacks to this level could potentially add intraday. But as long as we have daily closes above, especially the weekly close, that is bullish for continuation to uh, continue to go up uh, upward from here. Uh, so do note this line. This is very pivotal. And we actually retested it twice after FOMC today. Uh, basically just shows how pivotal it is. You can see here, FOMC started with this doji red candle on the 15 minute. I'll zoom in. We fell down to the orange line, popped up, 
fell down one more time and ripped to the sky straight off this orange level. So this this level starts in 2009 and it's still being respected to this day. And we've closed on it multiple times in the past week. So this level is very, very key. I've been talking to you guys about it for a long time and that alone should make you guys think that it's very significant. And this here uh, just proves it's significant. So continue to watch this level and how it uh, kind of interacts with this. One more thing, Apple right now, this is pretty bullish the fact that we got up above this channel um you could see here we actually had a head and shoulder we had the left shoulder uh the top of the head and then the right shoulder here fell down but ripped up past the head and shoulder and if you remember in previous videos if you have a bearish pattern that rips up to the upside and, and turns out to be bullish that makes it even more bullish uh, because it was a bear, bearish pattern before kind of makes shorts have to squeeze out of it um and right now this is the channel you can see for it and right now we are above it so as of now apple is bullish as long as it stays above uh, so be very careful if you were to short i'm not here to tell you no but if you decided to short you have to be very careful because this thing is in bull territory right now and continue higher if it stays above this level and remember it has to stay above the level on both spy and apple uh, in order to stay strong going forward but i appreciate you guys watching this video really happy with how this week worked out and the entire summer overall so far i uh, hope you guys have been profitable in your trading uh, and i will see you guys in the next video